So the day has come. <laughs> yeah. When Beverly and I um, bought Salty Lass, we had a budget um, of, I think, £15,000 it was. Uh, extra to the amount of money we sold on, paid on Salty Lass. And um, admittedly, we did use some of that for the first year's uh, marina contract. But we bought a DC to AC converter. Other way, please. Oh, no, you're right, it is a DC to AC. Sorry. It's a DC to AC converter as the last thing in our budget. <laughs> We spent the budget oh, a year and a half ago. Good while ago. A year and a half ago. So we're finally going to install it. It's about time to, or don't you think? Well, we've got um, our DC to AC converter. Now we've gone for a 375 watt um, power output purely because the main thing that we want to charge is our drone. And what about the great wire day backle? <sighs> Basically, I bought some wires and I did my power calculations and I got six millimeter squared wire um, because um, the, you know, that should be easily enough for this unit, but I forgot <laughs> the surge currents and the surge currents on this is quite actually uh, quite impressive to be honest uh, I needed 10 millimeters squared uh, cable so I had to go and buy some 10 mil squared cable but because we don't like to uh, waste we are going to be using the six millimeter squared cable but we're going to be using that on a different project which will be in this video anyway we also uh, bought a 60 amp breaker. Now this uh, 60 amps came in at 60 quid, so not the cheapest thing. However, it's got a switch in as well, which I liked. The f we liked that, didn't we, Bev? Yeah, because we can def definitely guarantee it's off. Yeah, so not only do you have the breakage and, you know, um, breaking load, but you can also turn the unit off because what you don't want to do is be powering this up and it not doing anything because it will still be using energy. So we're having our first debate already and what's it about? Basically the position of the unit. Um, basically I was wanting to put the unit in and then run the cables. Whereas Beverly is saying um, we'll run the cables and then we'll put the unit in, mainly on the grounds that um, if we've run the cables, if we're short, then we can move the unit a little bit. Whereas if we put the unit in and then run the cables, if we're a centimetre short, we're going to be absolutely gutted. So for that reason, we're going to put the cables in first. While we've got the um, boat, um, all the cushions and everything up, I said that I bought some six millimetre squared uh, cable and we were going to use that. Um, so what one of the things that we'd like to do is uh, at the moment, the this is the AC to DC converter, the Sterling charger. Um, both wires go to the uh, battery that's underneath the uh, underneath Beverly seat. But what we'd like to do is we'd like to uh, put the one of the wires across the battery. Whilst... Basically, if we if we split the if we split the charging leads across the batteries, then both batteries have to be charged. Yes. Whereas um, if you put them both on the same uh, battery, then uh, the battery that it's attached to will be um, charged up first and then the other one will be charged up eventually. And it may not be charged up as well because it's got the resistance of this battery to overcome as well as its own. Correct. <laughs> and I have 
um, is a mounting line um, underneath the floorboards and um, what we've done is we've attached um, the wire, the mousing line and an extra bit of string um, together so that we can run the cable underneath the floorboards and then um, you undo, obviously you've got the line through uh, but then you can use the string to pull the mousing line back uh, because it's one of those really useful things to have once you've got one installed always ne never lose never it lose never it. lose it always make sure it's there like we have a mousing line in our mast um you know we've got one running to the back of the boat we've got one running to the back of the boat but once you've got your mousing line in place don't get rid of it it's too useful and don't use cheap string. So how are we doing on the uh, length of the cable, Bev? It's a bit critical. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Let's say, shall we, it's a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> you might need to clip too much off. Okay, so it's now time to take the 10mm square cable for the inverter, which will be going in the positive terminal of this battery, and the negative will be going in the negative terminal of the other battery, so that the I... load is shared between both batteries. Both have to discharge through the system. Whereas if we put them both onto here, then this battery is the one that gets charged the most, it's the one that gets discharged the most, whereas that one over there doesn't. Um, that means this one wears out quicker, and when one battery goes in a battery bank, it takes the whole battery bank with it. So by spreading the charging across both batteries and spreading the big load across both batteries, we hope to give the batteries a better life. That's the plan. Yeah, but because we've uh, run the red cable uh, across the boat, uh, that will free a red terminal up, which is why we're doing the red on this side. Yeah. Um, because just so that it, it, it evens the load. It basically means that all the charging points run to that battery for, for the reds, run to that battery, and all the negatives run to this battery. But for the load, we have it the other way around. We have the negative there and the positive here. It just spreads, it just spreads it out a bit. Well, um, Beverly, as always, was very wise. Um, our red cable just about comes to um, this block here. And don't forget, we've got to terminate it and everything. Um, but now we're in a much better position to know exactly where the cable's going to go. So where the unit's going to go. Whereas I wanted it over here. And we would have been sure, only by a couple of centimetres, but regardless, we would have been sure. We can use the crimp we've already got onto the back of the switch and we can get a new line crimped from the switch to the battery. Yes. That gives us a few extra centimetres to draw this line through. That is true. I agree. So just by having a cable, he can actually make the cable up. Mm, and just bring it. And just bring it, and then we just need to fit it. Yeah, and we just yeah, that's right, because we've already got a crimp on this end. But we put it onto the um, switch. So we just get him to do like a half meter cable with a double crimp. Uh, it won't even be needed, but the thing is, we'll measure it, and he will do that, and that will just give us a little bit extra. Yeah, that sounds perfect. There we go. Excellent solution. Well, Dave, do you think you could uh, provide us with question of the week? Yes. What I would like to know is, how do you two live in here when you fall out with each other? Ah, cheers. <laughs> so, what do we? How do we manage to live in such a small space without being famous for murdering each other on a boat? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, I think it's because we're friends. Uh, we met in 1984 Lordy. <laughs> and uh, we instantly got on we did and uh, we then became pen pals because that was way back before the emails oh gosh yeah that was, that was pre yeah <laughs> so at that time we used to write to each other on a fairly regular basis maybe once every two months I something like that and we just uh, keep everybody keep ourselves up to date with all our news. Yeah. Um, I, th I think another thing as well is, as well as being good friends, it helps to have common interests. But, yes. But we don't share all our interests. We we it's very Venn diagram. There is there is an overlap, and 
we both have interests in common, but I have things you're not interested in and you have things I'm not interested in. You're very keen on the guides, scouts, brownies, all that sort of thing, whereas I've never been involved in that. Um, I do a lot of crafts and I enjoy craft stuff like sewing. Um, yeah. I'm going to try and learn to knit, things of that nature. So I have interests which are separate from Beverly's. Yeah, whereas I'm more on the things like cooking. Um, I've done an awful lot of what I'd call travel-y stuff in a way. You know, I did advanced driving, I did. I learned to fly, I've learned, learned to do sailboats. I haven't done trains, I just go back and forward. <laughs> um, you know, things like that. Um, slightly more cerebral, I suppose. Things like astrophysics, cosmology, applied maths, physics. Whereas, because um, well, the my thing... de degree was an engineer, yeah. um, although I am interested in science, like Beverly, mine is more about how you can apply that science. So we have a commonality but we and an overlap, but we each have very distinct things that are totally separate from each other. Yeah. We uh, also think you need uh, separate spaces. For instance, just because of the way it is, I own the port side of Salty Lass. And I own the storage side of Salty Lass. Um, so this area here um, is basically my private space. Yeah, and particularly at night. Yeah. Um, we'll quite often be watching things on movies or Netflix. Occasionally we do watch things together on, the, on this telly here. We put a movie on. But if we're watching separate things, I don't disturb you over there, and you don't disturb me over here. If I'm reading a book or you're watching a movie, we, we leave each other completely alone. Um, but that means that you have things to talk about, and it's nice to have lots of different things to talk about, because obviously you've got different viewpoints to bring into the conversation. Um, but that's really good. So for us, uh, the main things are, one, be friends. Mm -hmm. Two, have your own private space. Three, have common interests. As well as your own. also yeah. have your own interests. And number four, another important one, is do allow yourself time alone. Yes, now our time alone is usually things like go and have a bath for four or five hours. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes go for a walk on your own or go shopping on your own yeah or you go and see your mother yeah or if we're out sailing as well I got one of us might take the dinghy and the other one stay aboard hmm but have your own time where you do what you want to do maybe go visit another boat yeah you know but that's how we do it yeah oh well the weather outside is still pretty horrible to be honest Um, so that means that Beverly and I have got no excuse but to get on with the electrical work. Uh, but I have bought the last few items that I needed, which is a an additional um, electrical cable, which I've bought from a car um, company. Basically, it's um, a battery a battery connector, so that'll be perfect for us. Um, a little box, which is uh, going to um, we're going to put the bot the switch in just so that we can mount it in that. Um, so um, yeah, these are the last few things. So it's a case of getting this done and getting that job. I mean, say so one of the things that they say on a boat is it always takes longer than you think. We bought that inverter two years ago, <laughs> and we're finally, finally going to put it in. See, there's a lot of measuring going on. Yeah, well, I'm doing a little template, um, first of all, um, because obviously I can't sort of like get this on here. So I'm just making a, a template out of our favourite material. Uh, Cornflakes <laughs> box. Cornflakes box. So um, I'm just going to make the little template. Once I've got the template uh, and I can put it against there, then obviously I can um, sort it all out. And we have to pull the V-berth apart to get the tails out. We do, but 
that's just because of boat life you you have everything stored away and um yeah you expect life to get messy if you're doing a project i see we're on templates again it's template day on salty last year <laughs> so i also am on the cornflake boxes and um what i've done with this one is i've made it just to fit over this unit so it's quite snug round the uh, round the, the Volvo engine panel and what we're going to do is we're going to use this on this spur leftover acrylic we have to um, cut a panel out that this slightly broken panel can be mounted in and then this one here will be mounted onto the binnacle so that this will be sycophlexed onto this and it means that these broken screw holes are no longer an issue. Um, so that's basically what we're going to do with this. We have been through the panel um, with the um, multimeter and we've checked all the connections and we've tied them all back up again. Our only concern is that this unit here, which is the thing that uh, runs the alarms and the lights and things, if the fault is inside this unit, uh, it's a sealed unit which is filled up with goo and glop and apparently taking it apart just destroys it. Uh, apparently there's not much in here. About half a dozen diodes and a resistor or two, and that, that's about it. Uh, so if it wasn't filled with gloop, it would probably be very, very fixable, but it is what it is, and a new one's 250 quid, so we're hoping it's not that. Uh, there is also a bit of a debate in my head as to whether or not I should take this taco unit apart, uh, because the little engine R display in it is broken, and you can get the part for it on eBay, apparently, but you really have to strip this into pieces. I mean... There's a video on YouTube about doing it and it looks absolutely dreadful. But I'm, I'm in two minds about whether I should do that or not. I, I think we should get it done now. And if we, we might come back to that as another project. But let's just get it in. Because um, we don't really care about the engine hours. I've not known about the engine hour ever since we've bought the boat. So it's only... I mean, our, our guidance to engine hours is change the oil twice a season. Yeah, but also um, we do keep that in the logbook. We do, but it's not accurate. No, it's not, but it's rough. Quick, the weather's cleared. Let's get all the tools out. and I have some shelves in this V-Birth which we call our garage because all garages have tools in hopefully in here yay I told you it was up against the side we have the jigsaw now all our tools apart from the jigsaw hang on if you're going to talk to camera go yeah all our tools apart from this jigsaw are in bags um purely because our idea was that will keep the moisture off the tools as long as possible and when we get little silica bags we just pop them in um so that we swap those round we have uh, missed the weather window do you hear that we have, we've missed a weather window. But you know what, another one will come along in a minute. Hopefully it will, but it's starting to rain again. <laughs> So how are you feeling about going outside and getting this plastic cut? I'm only doing it under protest, trust me on this. I know, but we have to get it done, Bev. No, we don't. You have to get it done. You're nagging me into it and I'm doing it anyway. Come on. So is that it for the day then, Bev? <sighs> don't know about it, but it's definitely me. I think there's going to be a mutiny if you do any more today. I have very, very good insider information. Trust me, there will be a mutiny.